if you would. All right. It is began. All right, Miss Ramona, tell us what we're doing. We are going to listen to me, and only me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we're, uh, we got a webinar tonight. Got two cases, one that Randy has been seeing, and actually Randy's going to start us off tonight. Come mm -hmm. on. There we go. Case one. Looks like Randy Clark seeing a good-looking interior designer. Woohoo! I'm, I'm glad she, you know, gave us headshots. To you yeah, sure. yeah. Nice office. Webinar. Looks like it's her so, office as well. Um. So yeah. So <laughs> case number one. Let, let's let's jump right into case number one. Case number one is a. Um, she's an interior designer. Uh, she was in a car accident. Uh, sitting at a stoplight, got ran into from behind. Uh, pretty hard enough to total both cards. Um, she, you know, typical kind of whiplash type stuff. They, she went to the ER, um, got the x-rays and all the stuff, and, and then they released her, and since then she's been in a lot of pain. Um, so the 926 was the, the motor vehicle accident. Um, I think I first saw her a little less than a month later, um, somewhere middle of October. I think it's uh, October 8th. Sorry. October 8th, there you go. So not too long, um, pretty soon after the accident. Uh, you can see she has aching in her back of her head and the neck. Uh, she is sore and has sharp neck and lower back pain, um, burning pain between the shoulder blades. Uh, when, when she came in, probably the burning pain was the most severe, um, followed by the um, neck and then the lower back uh, as, it, as she kind of prioritized those for us. Um, it's constant. It's always there. This pain never goes away since the accident. It's just like, like immediately after the accident, it all started. Um, and, and it hasn't gotten any better over the last few weeks. So pretty healthy person overall. Um, you can see that we're the first people she's tried for this, which is great. Um, no surgeries, no really other health problems that she's being treated for. Uh, we'll go to the next page there, Mona. Mona? Okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, no real medical history stuff. She, like I said, she's a very healthy person. She's just gotten this car accident and had been in a lot of pain ever since. Um, everything's pretty normal within limits here. You see the one thing she does check is be free of pain. Like she just wants to get out of her pain and, and she'll be good. Um, she, like, she just typical kind of walking. Not a whole lot of exercise, but she's a pretty active person in general. Um, she was a, a semi-professional kind of like ballet dancer. She did ballet into her adult years and um, was a competitive swimmer as well. So she she has some muscle tone. She's you know doing okay there. Um, so nothing too outstanding. Just a kind of a straightforward. Uh, motor vehicle accident case, something you might see on a regular basis. So let's go ahead and take a look at her chart. Um, she was an interesting one here in that a um, couple things to see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, have you guys answer what, what this chart tells us in those first four questions. Um, so go ahead and raise your hand when you know if she has a lower limb length inequality. Ooh, Eddie won. Eddie won? Eddie's won okay. her, yep. Okay, Mr. Eddie. What do you think? Yes, yes you um, think so? And, and which yeah, one? Left leg. Left, which one? Um, uh, so the, her trochanter on the left leg is lower, so it would have to be uh, 
her left leg. Yes, yes, her left leg. It, uh, my my guess, my my question was, do we think it's her femur or her tibia? Oh, femur. Femur. Okay. There we go. So Eddie is seeing that there's a left femur. It looks like it is inferior here on the left at the greater trochanter, and just looks like a very slight, maybe little, little tilt at the tibia, if any, um, and the supine posture. And the same thing when we look over in the standing, it's going to be everything's measuring inferior on the left. Now, um, she has a little more flexion on the left, right? We see 18 degrees on the left as opposed to 16 degrees on the right, which certainly will take that ASIS measurement and make it look a little bit bigger um, in the way of, of flexion than, than the other. Um, so it'll make it inferior with that flexion. Um, she had a just kind of a, a big C. Um, she she actually sheared a little. I didn't put that on there, but she has a slight shear to the left. Yeah, it was the left um, in the torso, uh, but not really in the head. So what turned out to be a, a pretty good C scoliosis going on. Um, that but a lot of it does get better when she lies down. Just the, the ASIS stays. Um, so how many fixations? I'll just go ahead and throw that out there. How many fixations do you think there are on this person? When you know that answer, go ahead and raise your hand. Oh my goodness, Eddie won again. We can't let what Eddie win all the time. Yeah. I made my screen where I could see all the attendees and I could watch yeah. who wins. It's like it's like a fun game for me. <laughs> I'm sure someone else can tell us about fixations. I don't know how to raise my hand, but here I am. Oh. Okay. Um, I don't have that screen, but there should be a button kind of over to the right somewhere that has a hand on it. I do not have that. Mm -hmm. Well, just raise your hand. We'll see. It. <laughs> Let's. I'm gonna. Hey, Eddie. How are you yes. raising your hand? There's a button there where you unmute yourself. Um, right below it, there's a hand. A hand I don't hand. have that hand. Can I you unmute have, yourself? I just have a mic. I have a video camera. I have a question mark, and then I have the setting symbol. Hmm. What okay, are well, you going to get a hand? <laughs> so you just you can just unmute yourself and unmute yourself when you're ready. How's that? Um, I do that. So so Taylor, fixations. Yes, How many fixations? I see one fixation. Where is that fixation? Um, right side superior ASIS. Right side superior ASIS. That is one fixation. There happens to be another one right there. Oh, sorry. Two. Sorry, I didn't see the other dot on the on the standing yes. chart. Yes. So, so um, anterior right side ASIS as well. Yes. So the anterior right side ASIS is also a fixation. Um, good, 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 good. So, this um, young, relatively healthy person got in a car accident, got all of a sudden these kind of chronic type symptoms um, that were severe enough that she couldn't go to work. Uh, they, they actually, the doctor who looked at her said, you are not allowed to go back to work. Um, that her symptoms were, were pretty severe and chronic in, in these issues. She only has two fixations. Um, SPMs, anybody have, have any SPMs? Or could tell me how many there are? Zero. Renee. I went on mute, Renee. Renee. <laughs> hey, I hey, was going to say Renee. zero too. Zero. I was say that, too, but he stole my thought. I know. Taylor does that. <laughs> He's a thought stealer. Um, so yes, Renee, Renee, and Taylor are both right. There are no SPMs. So she got no SPMs. She has a scoliosis, right? Um, but what else do we see? Is there anything else that tells you there that might be creating some of her pain? What else do we see here? I have a thought. Flexion disorder? 
there is a flexion. Uh, two degrees is not not a huge like that's almost within margin of error. We don't count a whole lot of that. Marianne, did you have a, a thought? Well, I wasn't necessarily going to say a flexion disorder, but there's excessive flexion in the pelvis. But excessive flexion, sure, sure. That 18 degrees is 18 and 16 are pretty high numbers. And and what kind of pain symptom do you think that would cause typically? Are you asking me? Low back. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Low back. Low back. Um, right. So that's that's the typical it, it, thing. Wouldn't that also contribute to the neck pain too? It certainly could. And and how would it do that? Well, if you're going to have excessive uh, um, flexion in the pelvis, then you're going to correct by um, taking your head posteriorly. So you're going to actually um, cause a tightness in the neck there. So extension, right, which is going to be posterior cervical tightness, right? Yes. Yes. So, so looking at this chart, um, I want to show you kind of the effects of a whiplash on someone who has these types of measurements. Um, because as it turns out, uh, I was fooled. Uh, she did not have a leg length inequality. Um, now, I, I was smart enough to catch it before I had to send her for an x-ray or anything like that. I, I did the, the lateral left hip and released the muscles in the iliotibial band on the left and then I had her stand back up and they were tight enough that when she stood back up that it actually leveled out in the pelvis. Um, so I was going to have Ramona do her last chart on here but I don't think we got her last chart. Um, oh. but it would have shown that, that everything is level there. Um, but she's still in a lot of chronic pain, right? So we have to figure out why that is. So Let's go ahead and take a look at her uh, lumbar spine. Are you, are next, you talking to me? Next slide. Yes, oh. next, next <laughs> slide. Gonna... I was like, the lumbar spine's right there. Um... Her lumbar spine. <laughs> I'll take a picture of her lumbar spine. There we go. Um, so this is a um, lumbar spine picture, right? Uh, it's a couple things to see here. What? Um, give me some comments. What are you guys seeing in this this picture? Marion uh, Chin Marianne one. was the first. To oh, get her hand up. Greg. Marianne. Greg was number two. Marion, what what did you have for us? I was going to say I see that the disc is bulging into the um, spinal cord. Like At what that. levels are, um, is the disc? What level is that? Let's see. Is that L4, L5? I'm not sure. Um, well, the answer there's is yes. Of, there's two of, there's two two of them. Match. Yeah. So yes. If, if, if L4, L5 is the low one because I guessed wrong, then of course the one above that would um, be... 3, 4. Yeah, 3, 4. Yes. 3, 4. L3, 4 and 4, 5 are both, both have some herniations there. Um, you, what else do we see? Can you explain how to tell, oh. to count, I mean, I'm... I haven't taken the radiology course. Can you can you explain how to figure out which ones are which at that point? Sure. Uh, Ramona, do you want to, since you have the pointer, do you want to help us out here? Okay, am I pointing or talking? Yes. Both? Yes. Can okay. you do both? I sure can. All right, fantastic. Uh, right there is the sacrum. You see that? Yes. And then that's five, four... Three, two, one. So how did you know that was the sacrum in L5, Ramona? Because I work with Randy Clark, and <laughs> I know these things. Just osmosis? Um, yes. Uh, actually, because of the shape, and you can see how... I, I go by the shape. I always think it looks kind of narrow, you know? And here right. it's like nice and square, unless you go have a, another way, Randy. Well, I mean, the first real disc, right? Because those little things in the, in the sacrum aren't discs. They're just like little spaces. The, the first real disc is between L5 and S1. So that, that's kind of where I know we're to start counting. Um, and so then we just count backwards from there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that <laughs> and why you sometimes have to catch yourself is, is what, what can sometimes happen, Marion? do you think? That would mess um, that up. 
Well, I was going to say um, maybe somebody had just removed yeah. from surgery. But you would see that, right? Okay. You would see the results of the surgery. Um, what can sometimes happen is they have six lumbar vertebra. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Um, it, and it's not super uncommon. I mean, I, I don't know what the actual percentage is for six lumbar vertebra, but I'm going to put it to 3 to 5% in my practice okay. that I run into. Um, so about 1 in 20 has a sixth lumbar vertebra. Um, and, and so what you do is you scroll through and you fi figure out where the ribs are, right? And you can figure out where the ribs attach. And you can start where, okay, the first one without ribs is L1 and count down. And if there's six of them, then that tells you that there's six lumbar vertebra. Oh. Interesting. Oh, you are one smart booger. Wow. So. All right. So what else do we see with this particular spine? Greg, did you have something you wanted to, to point out? No, that was just the uh, comment on that uh, and how to define that. Find okay. that, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Good. Uh, what else do we see in anybody? Let me see. Oh. Looks, like her, looks like she has no lordosis. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Um, she, it's a very straight lumbar spine, um, which is a bit surprising, right? Why, why would I say it's a bit surprising? Excessive flexion. She has yes. Excessive flexion. She has excessive pelvic flexion, which typically goes with a, a lordosis, right? You get that way back. Um, and so we, we see that going on. Well, uh, Marion, did you have something else here? Uh, yes. Anteriorly, it looks like at L5, L4, that disc has ruptured anteriorly. It does, doesn't it? I wondered if you were going to pick up on that. Um, it does seem to have an anterior rupture, um, that something is extruding possibly from the, the anterior side of that spine. What else do you notice about that disc? Marion. Um, it looks, I don't know if I should, it looks like um, that it's L5 is um, going posterior. Uh, not no? super much. Okay. No, I mean a little, but not, not really enough. No, I was really looking at the color of that disc compared to the color of the other discs. Oh, it's darker. The ones yes. above have some white, but all these are dark, indicating that yes. it's dehydrated. Dehydrated, exactly. So the fluid has escaped it. And, and you look at L5S1, uh, it's also very dark, right? Yes. Um, so it looks like that also has dehydrated. Um, so something is causing a lot of pressure across her lower discs. And so let's go... Yeah. Oh, I'll, we'll leave it here. That's fine. Um, so raise your hand if you, if you know how does one get excessive flexion and a straight lumbar spine? The, the iliums have to move in, independently of the sacrum. Maybe. <laughs> That's one way. That is one way to do it, yes. Elizabeth um, is the runner-up. Elizabeth, we're gonna unmute her. Elizabeth. I can't. Oh, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, would it have anything to do with muscular pull? Like, sure. Like psoas type uh, of pull. Yes. Yes. Um, if the psoas is tight enough, right? Um, you can actually, and you can see kind of, and the reason why Marion said that L5 was posterior of S1 is she's actually making up, the, the angle of S1 is that of, of the sacrum, is that of someone in flexion. Um, but she immediately makes up for that. Notice how L5 doesn't really sit very squarely on the sacrum. Um, she's immediately making up for this and straightening up her spine. Um, and and the largest muscle that has the ability to do something about that is the psoas. Uh, so that this is a, a prime indicator for psoas muscle tightness. Um, the Ramona, just to get 
just so everybody can kind of see what we're seeing here, the cross section. All right. So Ramon is going to point to the little line on the left picture, which is in between L3 and L4. Um, and then that line indicates the cross section picture, which is over here. Um, do you want to explain to them what, what features we can see on that cross section? Uh, you, you mean like the transverse or the spinous process and the spinous process. Ner mm -hmm. nerve root? Is that what you're talking about? Yep. Oh, yep. And what else okay. are we seeing? So <clears throat> what you're looking at uh, here is that is the vertebrae. And then there boop, 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 is the spinous process. Mm -hmm. And then you got muscle right there. Uh, and then here is, well, that's like the spinal cord there. And then here are like where the nerve roots. So when you look at this uh, cross section, what you're looking for is like a nerve root entrapment. And sometimes even if the cord is like pressing into that. Here, is it the cord or what's pressing into the nerve root? Not, well, the, not, not the cord. cord I mean the disc. The, the disc, disc, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to show them that little herniation that we're looking at there? Right there? Is that it? No, the herniation. The, oh, the disc? disc herniation. Uh, no, the, oh. So look at the disc. There you go, right there. Right there. Yes, that little right bump. There. Golly, you need like a microscope. That little bump is the disc herniation that's, that's starting to compromise the, the exiting nerve root. Um, right is what there. that is. So the nerve roots are right so, here and right here. Yep. So that is going to be, because you're looking from underneath, um, that's actually her right side. Um, where that, so if she had symptoms, I would expect from this, I would expect right-sided symptoms because the left nerve root is perfectly open. The right one's the one that's starting to close off. I am so, so I would, seeing a bunny. Do you see a bunny right there, like on both sides? Am I the only one that sees a bunny? Okay, sorry. Um, I don't, but if you want to, you could do a poll and they could raise their hand if they see a bunny. Okay, is <laughs> anyone else see a bunny? Go ahead, raise your hand. No one sees a bunny. Yeah. Oh, Renee saw Renee. the bunny. Thank you, Renee. Yeah. Texas, only us Texas, Texas people. Texas yeah. Must Someone's Okay, I'm tripping. Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> oh, Renee said he's going to support my peeps. Yes. <laughs> Um, okay, so so a couple of other little features you can see here. Um, this big, well, there, there's some like the aorta on the front. Um, it's right there. Uh, there's some muscle attachments that we're starting to see here. And the but back. That's the well, front and, and back. Front, but, right here. So th that's the major idea behind this, right, is that we're looking at a cross-section of where the line goes through. And, and you can move that line around and figure out where the, the best cross-section is to, to figure out that particular picture. So even though she has this flexion right in her pelvis, it's straightened out her lumbar spine. Now, we were expecting extension in her cervical spine. So let's see what's going on there. There's her cervical spine. Um, not, not extension. Uh, the opposite of extension um, being that she actually has a reverse cervical curve uh, going on. Uh, and you can see where it's starting to just get the beginnings of herniations. Uh, but and the well, let, again, because Ramona has the pointer. Hey, Ramona, you want to explain to them what you see on this MRI? I see a neck that is no very straight, and no bunnies. No bunnies on this one. Yes. Um, so yeah, you can see the herniation here, and of course the very reverse curve happening. Um, it looks like is that. Just the beginnings. Right, beginnings of it there. So yes. what we're looking at here. Small herniation. Yeah, this is, see this black thing here? That's the cord. And I believe that's the 
white matter around it. And then cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid. Thank you. Yes. And then that it's kind of fuzzy, but that looks like it's the vertebrae. Disc. That's the disc. The disc. Oh, okay. And then that's the disc going in there. Well, the reason I know it's disc and not vertebrae, because vertebrae looks very similar. Yeah. But you look to where the, the line is going through on oh, the side. Oh, and you have it right there. It's going right through the disc. Yeah. Um, gotcha. So, so, yeah. So, even though it's reversed, it's not, the, there's not a whole lot. There's, basically, you can look all the way down the cord there on the right picture, and you can see white space around it the entire way. <laughs> Uh, which means she still has some space around the cord, which means the pain she's experiencing really aren't coming from nerve entrapment here. Even though it looks really ugly and needs to be fixed, my my feeling is that this is a relatively new or at least exasperated. It may have been straight before, and the car accident made it go reverse. Um, and so, so that is... It is new information for us, right? So I'm going to let someone here raise their hand um, and let me know, looking at this, what muscles you want to treat. Ooh, Elizabeth won. Uh, Derek Oliver, long a close second. The anterior okay. cervical muscles. Sure. Sure, the anterior cervical muscles, especially right around the area that is reversed, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because those are segmentally innervated, right? So you can have segments of it that are very tight where others aren't that bad. Um, and so the segments right where that reversal is, is certainly an area that we would like to focus. Uh, right through there, yep. I keep pointing to them with my pointer, and then I realize you guys can't see it. Um, so if I say like right there, just know that my pointer is on something very important. I'll try to tap um, into your brain, see if I can. Yes. Yeah. So, so that is certainly something we want to. Lord, did you want to add something there, uh, Derek Oliver? No, no, no. Those. Oh, okay. No, th those are the muscles. The, yep, those are the primary the coli, ones we want to take a look at. Yep. Super and infrahyoids, you know all those. So I can tell you, I've treated this lady. I don't know how four times. Is that right? I don't know. Ramon had the file. Four or five times. Um, and, well, how many weeks has it been? About four weeks. So about four times. Um, the neck stuff went away actually pretty fast. The neck and the burning in the shoulder blades once we corrected a little bit of the posture. Uh, if you want to go back to her chart for just a second there, Mona. Oh, hold on. Sinking. Come on. Come. Let's go. 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 Okay, there you go. A little bit of a delay. I think you guys there will get it. it. There it is. Yes, there it is. Okay. Um, so the burning in the shoulder blades, that, that right shoulder was pretty far forward. Um, she was the driver in this particular accident. She was sitting in the driver's seat. So why do you think her right shoulder is forward? Anybody want to chime in there? Eddie Lugo. You have to unmute yourself because you've got yourself muted. Oh, the seatbelt, maybe? Yes. So why, what would the seatbelt do that would make the right shoulder come forward? It would hold back the left side and uh, allow the right side to go forward. Yes, correct. Because she's sitting there, seatbelt engages, um, airbag goes off, but it doesn't catch her before she rotates before she spins around that seat belt um, and creates this anterior right. And you'll see that the head came around that way as well. Um, so, so yeah, she, that was, that's pretty typical for a, a driver in a motor vehicle accident. Um, so we, we got that stuff back. We got that rotation out um, and got some of that, that tilt of her head out as well. Um, and that, in just a couple of treatments, got rid of her her pain in the upper body. The lower body still has a little bit of pain. Um, her psoas was ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculously tight. Um, oh, someone's making. Uh, I hear Greg. paper. Yep, I, I I muted Greg. That was Greg. Um, He's counting all them hundred bills. Is that what happened? Yeah, 
I know, Greg. Greg's rolling in it. Uh, he's printing them right now. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, the the upper body actually responded a little bit faster than the lower body. We actually have curve back in her neck again in just a, a couple of treatments, um, and now we're just basically getting the the psoas to to fully release it, Le especially the left psoas. Uh, the left psoas was was tighter than the right, uh, and and so we are still kind of working on that a little bit, but she's in just a few treatments is significantly better. Uh, but kind of presenting this as just a very typical motor vehicle accident. She was kind of like the, the textbook motor vehicle accident, um, a healthy person that, that got in a car accident and got in pain and really just wants to get back to work um, and is ready to go back to work, just the doctor hasn't let her yet. Um, so. So that's that's kind of that. So before we move on to case two, is there are there any other questions here for case number one? Uh, I oh. saw Greg's hand first. Sorry about the paper. I thought I was muted. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> um, and you were right. It was paper. Um, when you worked with her, uh, did her curves seem to change? Her cervical and lumbar. The the cervical curve changed pretty rapidly. Um, I. She was one of these people when she laid on the table, I couldn't get my hand behind her neck. Like it was just flat right on the table, right? There was no curve there at all. Um, we're at a point now, I also, you know, beyond doing the treatment, we were like, okay, you need to not do anything that, that you're firing these anterior flexors. And one of the, she was one of these people who slept with two pillows and would lie on her back and prop her head way up. Uh, uh -huh. um, and so we had to change that habit as well. Uh, but between that and the treatment, she has a, I mean, a completely natural curve now. I mean, her curve is completely wow. back. Uh, it's, the, that curve came back very quickly. The lumbar curve is coming back a little slower. I'm actually, just this last week, gave her a little bit of a, a lumbar roll. Like I, I, you know, I just rolled up a little towel and put it in the, her lumbar spine when she's laying on her back to try to start to facilitate that that curve a little bit. Um, so that one's not fully there. Uh, like I said, we're about four weeks into this. Uh, but the, the cervical one did come back very quickly and all her upper body symptoms are, are essentially gone. Wow, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Marion, you had a question. Yeah, I was curious, um, did the accident really bring about such a severe loss of um, lordotic curve in the, in the um, lumbar area as well as the lack of cervical curve? Or was, was it discovered because of the accident? I, I would actually probably say that was discovered because of the accident. The, um, the, and the reason for that, if you want to go to that picture here real quick, Ramona. Hold on. Almost there. There we go. Okay. Uh, um, no. Oh, eh, oh, too oh, far. There, there, there we go. Eh, eh, eh. Are we good? Are we okay. doing lumbar? Yeah. Um, the reason oh, yeah. why I say that, yeah. The reason why I say that, Marion. Actually, I have a question. On, well, I was going to have a question on the other one too, but that's all right. Okay, sure. Well, let's just answer this one first. Um, the reason I say that is the the dehydration and the of the bottom two yes. is typically in that that kind of that spilling out in the anterior aspect of L4 L5 um, is. Yes. I'm sorry. So yeah, that that typically that looks old. That looks like it's mm. been there for a bit. Um, that doesn't have the, the look of a new herniation. Uh, so that looks like that's been there for probably a little bit. I think the accident made it worse. She had no back pain until the accident. Um, so the accident, certainly the, the extra strain from the flexion of the accident probably did increase her symptom. Mm. But it, it did not, I, it wasn't the full cause of this. Um, certainly, but probably saved her some more disc herniations, right? <laughs> These beginning herniations that are getting real close to cutting off the nerves, we are now able to, to solve that and, and actually probably catch her and, and keep her from having a back surgery. So in some ways, the accident was a good thing because she wouldn't have known until, till, you know, there was a problem. Yes. Um, that anterior herniation, I mean, it looks yes. so severe. Is, I mean, will it be okay just to, for her to leave it? Like, I mean, what, 
Will that eventually need surgery? This looks severe. That's what I'm asking. No, it, the, that's the thing about the anterior stuff is that it really doesn't ever cause a problem. Um, the only thing that could cause is the, because that disc gets so dehydrated, the peripheral nerves as they come out the side, um, the space between L4 and L5 is going to get smaller, and as it does that, the peripheral canals will also get smaller. Mm. Um, and so you could get some peripheral stenosis, um, depending on, you know, so there's some genetic factors there, but you could get some peripheral stenosis that could cause some nerve entrapment and cause, cause some issues. Um, but because there are no nerves really in the front of the spine, it, there is no pain when it herniates that way. Okay. I did have one more question on the cervical sure. image. I'm sure Ramona I, will get us there. I was looking at it. Again. And it yeah. almost, is it, am I seeing this right? It almost looks like Chiari malformation starting. Is that not, or am I wrong? It's, though? yeah, it's not quite there. Um, that's still above the frame and magnum because uh, you can see the bone, right? Mm -hmm. The bone is right there. So it's not actually, because the other piece of the bone is kind of not, not directly horizontal. It's kind of horizontal and anterior, or I'm sorry, inferior. Okay. Nope. Uh, I don't have the point here, so I can't. Point here, yeah, I, I but just in front of the brainstem, right? Yeah. The, 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 down, down, down. There's a bone, up, up, right there. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so that's the foramen magnum is between those two two spots, and it, and if you drew a line across it, the cerebellum is not actually dropping below okay. that line. Um, so it is close, but it's not actually a Chiari malformation. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. There, I, I don't know if anyone saw, saw the fish. Does anyone see the fish right here? No one. Oh, someone saw the fish. Eddie. Eddie saw the fish, and so did no, Greg. No, Eddie's hand was already up. He was well, already. Greg saw the hand. fish. <laughs> so Eddie, other than the fish, nobody sees the fish. Just you. <laughs> did you have a comment there? I was um, asked about the. Uh, the allegal inequality, you said that you were fooled by, by something. I didn't quite understand what you were saying yeah. there. She was in a lot of spasm in her left uh, lateral compartment of her hip. Okay. Um, so that trochanter was very hard to feel. She was, like I said, she was very muscular. Okay. Um, and so the, though she had this big tilt in her pelvis, very easy to feel at the ASIS, the trochanter, I kind of thought it might be off. But when I released those muscles, all those lines leveled out. Uh, okay. So I I was like, okay, that's not that was a, that's a functional difference, not a structural difference, and, and I didn't end up sending her for an X-ray. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions on this case? Oh, no more. All right. Case number two. All right, my turn. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is case two. This patient is a physical therapist, hence the lady helping someone as a therapist. Uh, Kevin and I both actually see this patient. Um, let's see, why am I why am I not clicking? There we go. Okay, um, this patient. Um, Actually, there's a there's a little backstory on her intake form. Um, she she filled out she's an insurance case, so she ended up filling out a whole bunch of paperwork, and so she filled out our lengthy insurance paperwork, and then she came to our clinic, and we're like, oh, you need to fill out this, and she's like, what? And uh, <clears throat> what her biggest complaint of her headaches is doing paperwork. <laughs> So, um, as you can see, she kind of scribbled things pretty fast because I think she um, was in a lot of pain while she was doing the paperwork. But anyway, um, she was in a car accident, and uh, she has a lot of head pain. Um, so you can see here, she talks about thoracic pain going into the head. Uh, the way she normally describes it, it starts in the temporal region, and like the temporalis, and it turns into like a cat. Um, she also has like hand numbness on the left side and uh, her index finger, thumb, and her middle finger um, all get affected. 
um, her headache is pretty much every day from 1 to 12 hours a day. Uh, it's constantly there. Um, I think that says head, constant neck trauma, something. But basically, she has scapular pain as well in thoracic area. Um, what makes it better, she likes to walking, rest, and ice. Um, and then also she has three, some disc bulges at 3, 4, 4, 5, C5, and 6, and C7. And uh, let me actually get you, there's actually a pretty nice list. Okay, so here is um, the list that she came in with. So you can see this is where her, the MRI revealed all these disc bulges here. Um, she had a procedure done. I believe this is was the facet block. She said that helped a little bit. Um, she also got chiropractic and massage, um, which that helped a little bit as well. Um, and then she was also seeing another chiropractor uh, that I think he did a different technique compared to this one here. Uh, and uh, she said that he actually gave her relief. But she said what was interesting is these actually, um, especially this one here, actually gave her some discomfort. Um, she actually was worse from the sessions, but she said she actually felt like she maybe improved a little bit. Um, and also what she's been doing to help with the headaches is actually caffeine. She said caffeine helps a whole lot, but uh, it does help. It doesn't. It affects her sleep, so she. But she does a diet coke every morning to help with the headache. Um, part of the reason why it's a diet coke is she has an allergy to sugar, so um, so that's why she does that. And then she, right now she's taking a um, is it Valium Valium at night to help her sleep. So um, pretty pretty severe car accident. I believe her car accident was in October of last year. So um, we've been working with her. So the good news is uh, she actually has been improving from our sessions. And I think she said she feels like her sessions um, really have gotten better with us. Um, and before, <clears throat> before she actually got in this car accident, she was really active. Um, she was doing Pilates. She could actually do roller coasters. She was walking. Um, she actually, again, she's a, a um, physical therapist, so she was seeing about nine patients a day is what she was saying. She could do nine patients, but usually her average was eight. Um, and she said what really makes the headaches worse um, after the accident was the paperwork. Uh, she said getting at a computer, flexing her, head, her neck and looking down is really that makes the um, headaches really come on. And then driving, actually driving makes the headaches worse. Um, the hand numbness gets worse with the driving. Um, and she said even sometimes with the um, paperwork it does as well. Um, so let me show the chart. And so, um, for my little school students, this chart might look familiar <laughs> because I tend to use this patient a lot, for example, of thoracic outlet. Um, so, I want to throw a little question out there for you. This patient has thoracic outlet. Which, which arm is going numb? Oh, Elizabeth? Oh, oh, I got three. Okay. Elizabeth? Let's say the, the right side. Why were you saying the right side? Um, well, okay. The, the reason I said the right side is because uh, she's anterior. Her shoulder is like, could be immediately rotated okay. on the right side. Um, the fact that it's up, I mean, I've had people who, who, like, you know, you have this, the right side superior and the left side's inferior. I've had it be on both sides that they've had of, of that particular um, superior-inferior um, 
measurement of people have having that t those types of sim symptoms. So I'm just guessing that may be the right side because of the anterior shoulder. Okay. So let's first think what is what is thoracic outlet? Like the actual thoracic outlet. Mm -hmm. how, how would you define that? The the nerves that come, the cervical nerves that come down through um, behind, uh, underneath the pec minor and, and and down the arm. Okay, good. So if you think um, it's it's basically getting entrapped, right? And yeah. so if you think about what what is one thing that the pec minor will do to the scapula? Uh, protract it. Sure. It also, um, if you think about the pull of it, it attaches at the pec minor, goes onto the ribs. Mm -hmm. It can actually depress the scapula, mm -hmm. and the pec minor can also entrap like that brachial plexus. But the biggest thing, too, is it's that clavicle that comes down onto that whole area. Mm -hmm. and that can cause that thoracic outlet. So one thing that the patient will actually say is the hand actually is cold. Um, and we actually have one patient that has a, a very severe case of thoracic outlet where her hands actually have like a blue tint to them and can actually, is actually starting to, um, the skin actually will, um, what's the word, like kind of crack because of lack of circulation. So here, what you'll see is she actually has not only just a depressed left shoulder, but she actually has the left shoulder go, going behind the coronal plane. So the right shoulder, actually it's more like drawing back that left shoulder and the right coming forward. So do you see, so if you actually put yourself in that distortion, you can actually feel how much pressure is in this area. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. So, Next question is, does she have a leg link difference? Oh, Eddie. Does she have a leg link difference, Eddie? It seems like she does. It seems like she does, but she doesn't have knees, apparently. I'm just joking. <laughs> there's a, there's a mess, measurement missing, but I see yes. the, the pads since the right is shorter, that her right leg is shorter. I think that's a good assumption. Okay. Looking at those measurements, Ramon is going to put in a measurement. <laughs> Hi, tibial. Osteo, what? Oh my god, I was sitting there talking to nobody. I just muted myself. Yeah, okay. You did it totally. I was totally sitting there just gabbing away and I'm like, why are they ignoring me? Um I thought you were concentrating. Yeah, that's why it became peaceful for like two seconds. Um anyway. So here, what happened is she actually had a surgery where they um they did something to her tibias. Uh she had that what's that osseous glossus? <laughs> what is it called, Randy? Oshkosh slaughter. Oshkosh. <laughs> is that Oshkosh bagosh? No, the, it's not no. called Oshkosh bagosh. But she had she had that. She had the Oshkosh okay. slaughter. So you could use the the femur head. Head of the fibula. Yeah, or fibula. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. That said, does that say femur? It says femur. Oh, okay. So I think when they did this surgery, her femur internally rotates. But the tibia externally rotates. So I think that's why he, yeah, they like reattached her all of weird. Ah. So, so ROT in Kevin land is rotate. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, okay, so, so it's probably why. Does it look like she has a leg link? But anyway, I guess she, she doesn't have a leg link difference. Um, I don't know why he... But you can't tell that from it. this chart. No, you can't, but just to let you guys know, she doesn't have one. I think he did have her take an x-ray, though, didn't he? No, he didn't. He did some other stuff to her, and he... Oh, uh, okay. 
It's like the night of car accidents and fake out leg lengths. Yeah, look at that. I uh, know. It's a theme. I didn't even know what your patient was going through, Randy. It's like we're connected somehow. It's amazing. Um, okay, so next question is fixations. How many fixations does this patient have? Oh, Eddie wins again. Man, that egg boy is fast. Should I well, call him Eddie? Well, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can be fast if you're not right. All right, uh, Eddie. I see six. I see six. One, two. Wait. Hold on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Four, five. Oh, no. Wait. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's six. Uh, I don't see six. Hold on. Wait. One, two, three. One, one, two, two three. three. One, two, three, four. four. Five, six. I see six. Okay. Yep. I see them now. Oh, now he has to name them, though. <laughs> he could just be pulling the lucky numbers. He could just, he could, yeah, he could just be like, yeah, it's six. six. <laughs> so is he obliquity to the left? Um, and the temporal. Left temporal. Anterior, temporal. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Auditory meatus, right superior, occiput right superior, AC joint, right superior, um, clavicle, right superior. I think that's that six. would be six. There that you go. Six, yes. So they all are pretty high up, huh? Like upper body yeah. kind of fixations. Um, and I think most of her symptoms are upper body symptoms, right? Um, yep. That would make some sense. Uh, what about uh, the SPMs? Oh, wait, hold on. i got to reset this. Okay, ready? Set, go. Oh, Marion Chin wins. Marion Chin. Ding, 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 ding. What do we have for Marion Chin today? I muted myself, sorry. Oh. Um, just, just one. Uh, and that is the rotation in the ilium. It reversed. Very good. There you go. All right. And is she de meeting the demands? Oh. Oh, Eddie. Eddie had his hand up. Are you answering the meeting Was the it demands? Is there a tilt in supine? No, the SPM. Is there a tilt in supine? There is no tilt in supine. Oh, uh, cranial? What are you talking about? Cranial or pelvic? Cranial. Are you talking about cranial? Tilting to the right. Was it straight standing or tilting to the right spin? It was, I think it was straight. It's straight standing. Oh, then then that oh. would also be oh, an SPM. Oh, man, that's an SPM. Hot it dog. Hot. Look at that. We've been schooled by the student. The student is not the teacher. Wait. <laughs> that's late night. You guys are tired. Long day. <laughs> Uh, I am useless now as a therapist and teacher. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is that why you give them hard tests so you can feel better about I'm things like have this? To make the tests harder now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you know what the Vinci's teacher did, right? No. He destroyed all his paintings and swore never to paint ever again. <laughs> 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 Is that where I'm heading? Are you trying to tell me that's where I'm heading, Eddie? No, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, you'd have to, so, Grady, you'd have to go out and like hurt all your patients. <laughs> yes, that's it. And give them to me. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I'm going to mute myself now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so we got two SPMs. We got six fixations. Most of them are uh, upper body uh, on this lady. So tell us what you did with this, this young lady. Oh, so what's interesting is this patient uh, gave me a good lesson of, of scar tissue because um, she, she's pretty jacked up. I mean, I will be honest with you. She's been coming to me about twice a week for about three months now. Now, the symptoms are better. I mean, she's not getting the headache. Um, no thoracic pain at all. <clears throat> the scapula pain is all gone. The biggest thing we're working on now is the headaches. 
And um, it was interesting because the big turning point was probably working. We did intercostals on the left. Um, we did uh, TMJ muscles, the masseter temporalis, but mo mostly the masseter. Um, but she really feels like there's all these adhesions and scar tissue in the area. So we worked a lot of the um, uh, uh, rotatories on the right for that rotation. So it's actually just been a process. Um, what's interesting, and I don't know if you, you guys have heard about this, but she uses lacrosse balls uh, as mobilization and breaking up the scar tissue right in her thoracic area which I actually bought like a pair of those lacrosse balls and you put it in the sock and them suckers hurt, okay? <laughs> I mean, whoo, that woman, she um, was very motivated to get better though because she, she really, you know, from this car accident reduced her workload from eight patients a day to three patients. But now we got her up to about, she can now see eight patients and not have a terrible headache for the rest of the day, so, um, or a terrible headache at the end of the day. Um, but pretty much we did a lot of just trying to, like she believes, breaking up the scar tissue in the intercostals, really opening up um, that thoracic area, and um, what else did we do? That's it right now I could think of. Any questions about this patient? Well, question panel. Uh, you can use roller hockey balls too if you can't find lacrosse balls. Roller hockey balls. What is roller hockey balls? Is it oh, ever? yeah. So they're they're hard little balls that you use for roller hockey. <laughs> Very hard. <laughs> they are. Uh, yes. <laughs> Okay. Well, so they're harder than the crossballs? Um, they're pretty, I don't know. I've never actually checked the density of them next to each other, but they're both, they're similar. The body wrench is a paraspinal mobilizer. The body wrench? The body wrench. Is that a wrestler? Those aren't questions. Oh, well, oh, Google. He told me to Google it. Uh, it looks like Derek has a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, where, ahead, where, where, would, where would you pick up roller hockey balls? Um, at the at roller, roller hockey, hockey store. store. <laughs> <laughs> I got my lacrosse balls at the Dick's Hard with Dick's. Oh, Dick's. Okay. All right. Yeah. Dick's store. Yeah, roller hockey. I mean, roller hockey, right? It's just hockey that they play on roller blades, right? It's, yeah. it's So anywhere that sells roller blades and hockey sticks and stuff okay. like that is the place where you would end up getting something like that. Sports Authority. Frank said, Frank, Frank, Frank said Sports Authority. Sports Thank you, Authority? Frank. Yeah. Well, we, well, we just, uh, Dick's just opened up up here, so. Oh, there you go. That's where I got my lacrosse balls. Okay. That would work just fine. Yeah. But two of them, like, cost me six bucks. Wow. And then you might want to try tennis balls first, because they're not as hard. Right, right. You know, it's kind of like the different levels of of right. Zelda, you start off. Masochism. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Working nicely. Here, try racquetballs first, so, then tennis balls. Okay. So these are, uh, I mean, as it turned out, pretty similar cases. Um, the, the difference here is uh, <coughs> the second lady had been a full year since her car accident. Um, and a lot of this had scarred tissued up and gotten much harder, and, and now it's taken, what did you say, three months? Yeah. Uh, twice a week? Yeah. And um, I mean, this is on top of the other stuff she did, the chiropractic adjustments yeah. and all that. Right, right. I mean, but this person had a list of, so this is an unhealthy person who got in a car accident and then waited a year to come see us. Um, oh, no, she was pretty other, healthy. Was she? Yeah, she right, was. You're right, she was. Yeah. So she was healthy, but then she waited a year. The other one was a healthy person who we saw two weeks after the accident. Um, and, and in just a few weeks, I've, I've got them into a, uh, a pretty good state. So this is a, a good example of why they need to come see us.
pretty soon after the accident and not wait till there are crazy problems that they can't deal with. Um, is that that's it makes a really big difference in treatment. Um, how soon you can get them after the accident, how quickly you can get them better, um, determined by how quickly it's how soon it's been since the accident has occurred. Um, so as it turns out, it's a it's a good example of of why you need to get, tell your patients to get in right away. Uh, we used to say wait, right? That was the big thing was wait, you know, uh, 72 hours or, or something like that. Um, the newest research is now telling us no, that's not true. Um, get them in ASAP. Hmm. Um, that, that the new research is actually showing that now you don't go super deep, super fast on someone who's still in a, the early stages, um, but actually doing massage and actually getting the, the lymph flowing and getting um, the, the circulation through the tissue does help speed up the process. Even, I mean, they're, they're literally taking people directly out of surgery and working on them in the hospital, you know, as they wake up. Yeah, it's, it, it's really the quicker you can get to them after the trauma, it seems like the better the results and the quicker the results. Uh, it's, it's kind of akin to the, you know, when they used to have do hip surgeries and tell you, you know, lay you up for, for a week and then slowly bring you back. And now the day of the hip surgery, they have people walking up and down the hallway. Um, and it's because they found that they recover faster. Uh, that, so the, the research is now showing that if you can get in there quick, it makes a huge difference. So that's something to tell your patients. Um, next time they get into a car accident, you know, don't don't wait around. Come make an appointment. You know, at the accident scene, their first call should be to you, and then nine one one. Instead of four one one. That's call. right. Call <laughs> first call Derek, and then call the ambulance. <laughs> because it's easier to get in with the ambulance, Derek. You're gonna have to try to make some space to get in the schedule. So. Amen. That's right. So, hey, Randy, I got a so, question for you. Sure. I think I asked you this before, but so you know when you get in a car accident, or I mean, I don't no. think you've ever been in one, but anyway, so when I got in my few accidents, um, yes. at first, like you pop out of the car and you're like, hey, I'm fine, everything's great. You're like, you know, running around, saving lives. And then like two days into it, like the pain just get worse and worse. And yes. then, like four days into it, it's like you want you want to like die. Uh, yes. Okay, so why is that? Like, I I was thinking maybe the adrenaline rush is like gone, but like you can't have like a four day adrenaline rush, can you? No, I, I would okay. hope not. Your body would have a hard time with that. Um, but no, that that delayed muscle soreness. It's the same reason when you work out, right? That you're it's two days later that you're sore. You don't. You're not sore during the workout. Um, the that when you tear muscle and you do things like that, you don't feel it right away. You feel the recovery. Uh, but what the, they're finding is, if you can start manipulating the tissue and massaging the tissue, you can eliminate a lot of that soreness. Uh, that if you can get to them quickly, you can actually actually stop a lot of that from happening. Marion, did you have a question? Yeah, well, no, see, that is so true because I, I, um, a drunk driver pulled out in front of me and my car was totaled. And I had known a woman who was trained by Paul um, long before you guys were involved with her. And she says, we get into me immediately. And I did. I went to her within four hours of the accident. She worked on me. I had no loss of range of motion. She said, in two days, you might begin to feel a little stiff. She says, see me immediately. I did with the very fr first ache. And she says, you'll need one more treatment on Friday. Cause I saw her Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And she says, you'll never have any pain, and I never did. Yeah, it's, it, and I mean, that was before probably the, the research, but now the research supports that. Yeah. Um, the research supports getting in and doing it quick. Uh, yep. so, so that's something we, we certainly wanted to pass along to you, is that things we used to teach, we are changing our mind as the new information is coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so that's that's the new information is get in as fast as you can get in you know meet them at the accent scene 
So, oh, look at the cute puppies Aww. and kittens. So cute. I think that's um, a fake hat. I don't. I don't think it's a real hat. That looks look photoshopped. Like yeah, it's photoshopped. Oh, it may be photoshopped in, but it, it looks like a real hat. Yeah, um, yeah. That's kind of so, cute right there, little kitten. Curled up. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It kind of looks like it's not alive. <laughs> um, but, so December 2nd. December 2nd is the next first Monday of the month. Um, we will be maybe mona -less on that day. Um, so if you guys don't show up, that's, that's cool. I know who you totally love more. It's cool if you don't show up because the whole reason to show up is for Mona, and I understand that. Um, so, so she, I think, will be on an airplane during that time. Uh, Eddie, um, Eddie wanted to say how much he loved these pictures. He oh, said, yes. He used the word sick, so I'm assuming he's saying, oh, that is so sick. This is so like, awesome. Uh, like, oh, that's sick. Like, that that's was so a sick. Uh, yes. Yeah. Eddie loves my so. pictures. Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> oh wait! Now he's in. The phrase "stupid fat" that is, that is stupid, <laughs> stupid fat. fat. That is stupid <laughs> fat. Yeah. Stupid. Those, those puppies are <laughs> stupid fat. Um. So, so good. So I appreciate you guys coming out and and contributing to the webinar. Uh, and we will go ahead and see you in about a month. All Actually, right. I'll, I'll see you guys in two. Yes, next year. Next year for I'll see you guys next year. So, you know, happy New Year and stuff. Bye. Good night, y'all. Thank you so much.